Hello YouTube. I just wanted to offer a little bit of critical analysis um, on this video uh, where Ida Foxy Queen um, and High Desert Community Watch uh, had an encounter with police and um, I think they both know that I love them uh, so if I seem critical um, it's not uh, anything personal. It's just I think that there are a lot of um, things that can be learned by all people and or from all people. And um, so yeah, let's just uh, see where this goes. Hey, how you doing, sir? I'm um, um, Deputy Demolition Sheriff. I'm with Hyde at the Community Watch. Why did you pull me over? Okay. The reason I stopped you is because you realized some things out. Are you serious for that? Yes. That's actually a vehicle code against that, okay? Can I see your driver's license, sir? You guys really have nothing else what? better to do? What's that, sir? For what? I don't need no, to talk to you. No, we don't. Hey. So I can talk to you. Hey. Okay. So, this here shows an example of why you should always lock your door um, if you are pulled over um, like if your doors are unlocked then you should be making sure that they're all locked because uh, armed men on the side of the road should not be doing this in the first place but sometimes they do and uh, a good way to prevent that is to lock your door for sure. And I would barely crack down my windows. Hey, you closed my door. I got the Fourth Amendment. I'm with Hydra. It's a community watch. All right. So here he says, "You closed my door. That's a Fourth Amendment." Yada yada. Fourth Amendment um, tells you that you are one of their slaves, and that's ultimately how they hear it. I know a lot of people may not like to hear the fact that I say that, um, but if you look at any, if you analyze it logically, if you analyze the facts and the information that we have available to us that we can observe in reality, you can see that the Fourth Amendment uh, amounts to nothing. It's of no value except it tells them that okay so you're one of ours you're one of our property and that's that's usually where things start to get bad is when you mention that let's close my door right now or i'm going to call your supervisor close my door right now so i can talk to her then call your supervisor man right now please you have every right to call the supervisor call, no you, you i can request you the supervisor here you can see the police um, engaging in a very violent tactic um, where they're shining extremely bright light into people's eyes and into the cameras um, in an effect to reduce the ability um, for the people that they're pointing the light at to see. Um, also, sometimes, as you can see, it makes it a lot harder to um, see what is going on on the camera because all you see is this brilliant flash of light and they're well aware of this um, they may say that they're doing it in order to see but if they were doing it to see they would be doing like sweeping motions and, and looking at all points they know that they have two people that now they're at the point where they can just harass and that's why they're shining these bright lights it's violence and um, I've often thought about uh, using mirrors, like getting like a hand mirror or something and just having it in your hand already and letting them know that maybe that you have this in your hand so you don't get shot or something. But in case you see that, I think that uh, mirrors could be an effective tool. Um, just be careful, you know, reaching for an object because heaven forbid they'll They'll think it's a gun and use it as an excuse to murder you. Can you roll the window down and try to 
Nope. We don't need to talk to you. You need to. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, you need, need to, to get ID off my door. You. No, you no, don't. No, Anybody it's no. It's a traffic you stop, don't. sir. We know the scope and Anybody? we know the law. Can I talk? Okay, it's a traffic stop, sir. We know the scope and we know the law. Um, the scope. That would be a legalese term. I know that I can think of what I believe scope would be, um, but I could not be 100% certain that the thing that I think of when I hear the word scope in this context is accurate to what, say, Black's Law Dictionary or some judge might think that it means. Um, and we know the law is basically letting them know that, okay, so these people are falling into the whole, um, they think they're under some rule system, they think they, they still look at us as rulers, they just may think that, um, well, these, these people abide by some rules exactly as they're written, and so they're trying to hold me accountable to those, um, but even if you're pretending, I wouldn't pretend to be under their rules. Um, I would always say, uh, yeah, even according to your rules, like even your constitution says you're not supposed to be doing this to people. And so, you know, what right do you, where do you get this feeling like you have a right to do this to me? Can you answer that? Do you have any evidence at all to show that you have the right to give me orders and that you have the right to treat me as if I have an obligation to obey you? Show me that evidence, and if it exists, then maybe I'll start obeying at that point. But until I see the evidence that I have an obligation to obey you, um, you can order me all you want, but I'm not really going to obey you. Unless, of course, you decide to threaten me with violence. Talk? No. Anybody? No, we don't need a lecture. Okay? Everybody you can close like... my door. I got the Fourth Amendment right for you to get the shit off my property. Partner. No, partner. Everybody You're going to learn it. You're going to learn it. So, Fourth Amendment right, again, you know, saying, I have the right means, it's it's basically telling the police officer, when you, when you declare that you have the right to something, then at that point you are telling the police officer that you would like someone to make a legal decision as to whether or not... Um, the police officer is acting outside of his scope okay so the only reason the only way that you would want that is if you believed that slavery was legitimate because you are then accepting the slave role and asking your master um to uh to hear the case right and that's ultimately the problem to them it reads as implied consent and that's why that's why they that's how they rationalize doing this to you because you think you think that you're bound in one way and you don't quite understand that this is a master slave relationship it's 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 difficult for people to see that because of some of the programming that has gone on. Um, but that's how they read it. Be oh, identified. You're going to learn who I am. Can okay? Hi, there's a community watch. No, hey, your scope. No. Can I see Can, No, I, I don't think I have it with me. You don't? I'm not sure. Hey, don't. Okay, so here he immediately goes to, because they ask him for his license, I think. And he immediately goes to, I don't have it with me. So it's immediately his tone changes and he goes into asking or basically responding to their line of questioning um, as though he has the obligation to have that thing with him.
but one of the first things that I would establish is what will happen if I leave, if I try to leave right now? And they'll say some variant of, I'll chase you down, whatever, etc., etc. Um, okay, so you've said that you'll respond with violence if I attempt to leave. So are, do you have any personal first-hand knowledge of any facts, any fact at all, that would prove that I have an obligation to you? I have an ob obligation to comply with you, to you and to that rule. Yes or no? Simple yes or no. And I understand that some police officers might get extremely agitated. Um, and at that point, I would just remain very calm. Say, it appears that you're getting agitated. I would like your supervisor bring your supervisor because I no longer feel safe say something like that and if he continues like if he like makes you more afraid like if he backs off then that's good because that means that okay you're getting through um maybe you can you know he might uh be resistant to the idea but at least maybe you can get him to um get his supervisor hopefully um if he becomes more agitated and you get more afraid just say it say you know i feel extremely afraid right now so whatever you want me to do i will do and everything after this point is done only because you are making me afraid because you have shown me that you're going to be violent. So what would you like me to do? You know, something like that. What are you normally keeping at, sir? Um, I just uh, changed my, I just changed it to my snow pants. No, so, you know. okay. I'm not that? driving. Okay. Okay. Everybody okay. inside the vehicle during a Three, traffic six, stop nine, needs nine, to be nine, identified nine. and provide driver license. You understand that, right? No, I don't. Okay, well, I'm explaining that to you. Okay. So let's let's go back and listen to that again. During a traffic stop, I just changed my I just changed to my snow pants. No, I'm not driving. Everybody inside the vehicle during a traffic stop needs to be identified and provide driver license. You understand that, right? Okay. So police officer just said a lot of stuff. Okay. He said a lot of stuff there. He called the thing that they were in a vehicle, right, which is one of their legalese terms, um, which basically the way they look at it is if the person doesn't object to what I am saying, then they are said to agree to it. So he's, he's calling this thing a vehicle. The moment he does that, he is making a legal declaration and seeing if you're going to accept, you know, have articulate no objection to it, right? So, um, so the problem is, is if you say, what do you mean? This ain't a vehicle. This is no vehicle. Now you're making a counterclaim, essentially, and there you're, you're speaking legalese. You're using enough legalese to communicate that you want to settle that matter in front of a judge, which is not good. So if a police officer referred to the thing that I'm in as a vehicle, um, I would ask him, uh, excuse me, are you making a legal determination that this is a vehicle? Yes or no? Um, because that is a, that's not you making claims, so it's not you saying, yeah, I want to talk to a judge and go to court and stuff. Um, that is you asking for clarification as to what the police officer is saying. Because um, if he's determining that it's a vehicle, uh, he, ha he has to have evidence that it is, in fact, a vehicle, and that is factual evidence. Um, and, yeah, vehicle in legalese is not what humans commonly refer to as vehicles. 
Um, and then he, he was like, everyone in the car has to ID the, identify themselves. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Everyone in the vehicle has to identify themselves, right? Let's actually, let's listen one more time. Sorry. Let's, I just want to hear it one more time. No, okay. I'm not driving. Okay. Okay. Everybody the inside the vehicle during a traffic stop needs to be identified and provide driver license. You understand that, right? No, I what so he lied <laughs> because why why would okay <laughs> everyone in the vehicle during a traffic stop needs to show their driver's license is what he said and what if you don't have a driver's license? See, the fact that he said that was a lie. He was making it up, right? He was just... He he might be somewhat correct in that maybe there is some rule in his code that he enforces. Maybe there's a, a rule in his code that says everyone must identify themselves or something if they have ID or, or whatever. But for him to say that everyone has to show their driver's license is him making stuff up. He's lying. And being able to notice when they are doing that and pointing it out in a very Socratic method is um is priceless because you could act okay so look at his face right now right so he just said that sentence all right so you ask him what if everyone in the vehicle or you you know to be safe i might say car what if everyone in the car um what if, it, what if some of the people in the car didn't have a driver's license? See, and it's, it's a perfectly innocent question, right? Because you're not, you're asking for clarification and you're causing him to actually think about what he just said because he said a sentence expecting it to get past you and now you can say a sentence to or ask him a perfectly innocent clarification question right perfectly valid question a clarification into the rules that he is enforcing right so he asks you, um, you know, he says that, you ask him that question, and his face will change. You'll notice, like, you know, his eyes will uh, move to a different angle, right? And and he may uh, lift up his uh, upper lips a bit, you know. Um, he may even show some teeth for a moment. Uh, not, not, not really in an intimidating sense, but almost in an embarrassed sense. So that's the type of thing you want to be doing. Because when they realize that you're getting at to, getting to them like a human, like, and you're not just some uh, robot who just hears that he said something and then you're just trying to think of a response but if if what you do is hold a mirror up <laughs> just like with i suggest with the light right just hold a mental mirror up to the things that they say and point out the reality of what they are doing uh, because that's very embarrassing to them because they don't want to look at themselves and see themselves as the monster, even if that's what they act like for much of the day or night. They don't want to see that, especially not on the internet.
I don't. Okay, well, I'm explaining that to you now. Can I see your ID? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I wanted to also point out that he began that whole sentence with, do you understand? Okay, which means he's 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 asking you to stand under what he says, right? He's, do you understand that X means that you stand under X, and X is is what you are are saying that you will stand under. That is the the rule. That is the the you know whatever you want to call it law. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't need no. to be to have an ID to be a passenger in a car. So can you so, provide me with your last name, first name? No, don't. No. You're not getting nothing. No, this is ridiculous. And I'm gonna live stream to the for a, a for a, a light. Yeah, yeah, for a light. This is tripping. If you Why are you escalating? So when he says, "Okay, last name, etc., cetera, etc.," cetera, he puts the light down, right? So that was a a very subtle psychological tactic okay when I make the offer of give me your first and last name I'll take the light down because you might just say oh I like that the light is not shining brightly in my eyes and you might want that moment to last longer <laughs> and these are some of the subtle and possibly even subconscious cues that people give. Why are you escalating everything? Hey, I'm telling I'm you right now. Hey, he has, I'm telling you, the traffic stop, it stops. No, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to speak. No, I'm going to speak. What's your name? I'm going to speak. I'm going to tell you something. Your scope of authority doesn't stop with me because I, I have to know. You do not. Your scope of authority. I... Authority is a myth, and there are many resources out there that show, prove that authority is a myth. Uh, Lysander Spooner, Larkin Rose, um, a lot of the, a lot of the famous historical figures like. Um, Henry David Thoreau. Authority is a myth. And... Uh, that's been proven, I think. I, I mean, if you, if you have questions about that term, that authority is a myth, then let's hash it out, like, seriously, because... I am willing to hash that out with you. I'm just not willing to hash it out right here, right now. No, you do not. Hey, sir. Let me finish talking to you, bud, okay? No, I, he needs to close my door because this is my vehicle. Sir, are you... This is my vehicle. Whew. The weight of those words. The weight of those words is greater than the people who speak them imagine. And a lot of people, when they talk to me, they get mad at me because I tend to be precise with my words. And I, I try, I try to understand where people are coming from. Like I try to, I should say, comprehend it and catch myself and uh, formulate, you know, good responses. You know, I, I, I try to, I try to speak to people. And there are some points where people really think that, like, words don't matter so much. And they actually do. Words matter so much because words are what they are using to enslave people and that's that's the reality of the situation 
words are very important to understand, I think, or comprehend. Um, but they are also very restricting in many ways. Are you going to identify yourself, bud? Yes. Okay. I told you. I'm, I'm, Mr. Hernandez. No, you're not going to talk to me that way. Sir. I need a supervisor right now. Okay. No. I actually really liked um, High Desert Community Watch's response here because they called him by a title, Mr. Hermet, Hernet, Mr. Hernandez, right? And I love how he called it out. He's like, you're not going to talk to me that way. That is awesome. Can you step out of the vehicle? Yes, I'll step out. Step out of the vehicle, man. I did. I told you. Okay, step over here. So here they both decided to escalate. Um, here they both, the police officers decided to um, make their crime worse. Uh, they had already, they've already falsely imprisoned them. Um and now they're assaulting them, um, forcing them out of the car, uh, probably putting their hands on them. Um, yeah. This is some bullshit. You're not gonna, no, you're not gonna do this to me. Leave your bag there. So one of the things that I would always point out here is if, like I'm saying, like uh, it's it's good to it's, it's good to avoid the escalation of violence as much as possible. Um, so sometimes you might find yourself having to step outside or stand up or do whatever they tell you to do um, just because they have escalated the threat of violence to such an extent that now you fear that it is no longer safe to not do what they're telling you to do. Um, so at that point, I would always clarify it. Like just because you have a camera rolling, this is this is the record, okay? A lot of people may not realize this, but um, video like this is the record, all right? The police officers, the judges, the lawyers, they all pretend that the record exists only within their legal system, and they get to determine what goes on and off the record, but no. This is the record. This is how humans are going to establish whether or not other humans are out there committing crimes like these two police officers here. And I sure wouldn't want to be committing crimes <laughs> um, because times are changing. You're not going through anything. Okay, I'm just patting down, make sure you don't have any weapons, that's all. Please. This is some bull- Gonna make sure you don't have any weapons. What about your weapons, sir? Um, why do you believe that you have the right to see if I have any weapons? I can see that you have a gun. I can see that you have tasers. I can see that you have body armor. And you are going to see whether or not I have a weapon. Explain that one, Mr. Police Officer. Once again, where is your factual evidence? And I don't want to hear a bunch of opinions about what you believe about some vague group that calls itself We the People. I want to see facts. Something that proves that I have an obligation to you. Because honestly these police officers doing this are out of line and I get that they may not really think that what they're doing is wrong but they are doing this for a dopamine rush because this is the behavior that gives them their dopamine rush being able 
to stand over, to impose violence against another person gives them a dopamine rush. And I'm trying to keep this quick, so. Bullshit! Okay. You're going to learn a lesson about it. No problems, so, this is some bullshit. Hey, there's a community okay. watch. You're gonna learn a lesson about it. Alright? Hey, buddy. Alright? I'm sure I don't know that. Yep, police officers committing assault. Um, I mean, he's clearly touching her. I would be protesting, um, or protesting, uh, them touching, uh, because I would, I would inform them that they are committing a crime so that at least, um, that point of view is presented to them. Um, you know, I think it's important to establish that they were informed that they were committing a crime. Okay. Come over here, man. We're just driving. I get it. All right. I'm just trying to identify hey, man. more. Okay. Come over here. We're just driving. I get it. I get it. it has no reason to pull. There's no reason, ma'am. Tara, can I see your ID? Okay. No, no there's no reason. It. Can I see your ID? See, notice he's still asking the question, all right? Because basically the way they look at it in legalese is he is, you know, those words might be shown on a transcript or he might be able to say, and I said, um, can I see your ID? So whatever tone he's using, like his tone will often be used in a way um, to convey you must do this or he'll be trying to make you think that you have to do it um, but you'll notice that it's always a very innocuous question can I see your ID <laughs> so I would respond to that with are you, do you have personal first-hand knowledge of any fact that would prove that I have an obligation to show you an ID? Yes or no? Oh, you do? Okay, so what is it? Let's hear it or see it. Show me. No. You do understand that you need to provide a... No, I do not. Absolutely not. That is not, that is, you're lying right now. You do understand that you need to provide some identification, and Foxy did really good here by telling him that he was lying because he was. Can I place your handcuffs and place in the back of my vehicle? This is bullshit. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm gonna place you in handcuffs and place you in the back of my vehicle. Okay. <laughs> Notice the okay. Let's turn it into a question. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put you in handcuffs and place you in the back of my vehicle, okay? Yeah, we're just gonna go, go see a movie, you know? And I'll just hold you there indefinitely, like an animal, because, you know, I know you're in a vehicle. I know that you are definitely complying with us enough to let us know that you are our slaves. Okay? I'm trying to give you a chance. I'm trying to give you a chance. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that looks real good. I'm trying to give you a chance. For what? It's like there's some ominous thing that they want you to be thinking that they might do. <gasps> I might end up going to jail. <gasps> and yeah, jail sucks. It's terrible. They abuse prisoners in jail. <laughs> but they're trying to threaten you with some some uh, dark concept that you can only imagine. Like they, They'll never come out and say it. Like, they're, he's not going to come out and say, well, or else you'll spend the night in jail, but he's trying to make you think about it. I'm trying to give you a chance, you know? I'm trying to save you. 
Let's lock over here, buddy. Okay? He needs to clean I know. Up. See, and he, th he finds it funny. But you don't have a right to search sir, my car, man. You're, I'm not searching anything, but he, He's asking me for ID. Mr. Hernandez, I need to identify you, okay? And identify you. So this is like, um... This is almost like a, uh... A test of some kind, like, okay, I get to deal with this type of person. I get to see what this type of person is like. He, and, and he'll think of them as sovereign citizens, for sure. You do understand that you're not gonna win this. You do understand that you're not gonna win this. Like, win what? She's not gonna win what? And why? Is she not gonna win this because you have the gun? Is that is that that looming threat? that you like to have in the back of people's minds, the fact that, you know, ultimately, if you resisted enough, I could shoot you. I could use the force continuum. And that's that's the threat that's in the back of the mind, that you, they know that you always have that sense of danger in the back of your mind because of that fact and so they use it to manipulate you and scare you. And that's what he's doing now. He's revealing psychopathic tendencies. I'm not going to win this. You're going to violate me. Is that what you're saying? No. Yet you. Great question, Foxy. You're going to violate you. Or you're going to violate me. Is that what you're saying? And he's like, no, no. Oh, really? Uh. Well, let's see, you just said that you're going to put handcuffs in me and put me in your vehicle. So, how would that not be violating me? You've yet to show me any facts. You have yet to show me that I have an obligation to comply with your orders. You know, orders are when, you know, a superior gives orders to an inferior. Hello? Where is evidence that I am inferior to you? What separates you from just some random person with a gun? Just because your gang is large and a lot of people have a lot of knowledge and fear about your gang because your gang gets all of the, the weapons and you know, all of the military-grade armor and weapons and uh, vehicles. Uh, yeah, that's why... That's why they think that you're not going to win this. and that's, that's called tyranny. And if you allow them a smidgen of tyranny then I think there's room for improvement. You are! Everybody, yes, you listen, are! Everybody we inside are the vehicle no. needs to be, is going to be detained. During a traffic stop, will be detained, and everybody will be ID'd. No, you're not. Will be ID'd, identified. See, he's even, he's even speaking in legalese. That's why he corrects his sentences, because he wants to make sure that it is clear legalese, which is just a hidden language that you've been taught to think means one thing, but they use it a completely other way. I fight, okay? No, so here's your no, last chance. Record that. Okay? 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 Now if you provide it to me, then you guys can go anyway. Whatever my partner decides to do with him since he was a driver, that's his choice. Right now I'm dealing with you. Keep in mind that this is all over, like, a, a tail light or something. Like, this is literally over a tail light. They're escalating to this level of violence. Like, they don't have anything to do except this. 
you think that they're out to protect you, you think that they're out to actually stop crime, no. This is what they're out doing. And when they do this and they write people a ticket, most of those people pay the ticket. Oh, and some of those people end up only like paying three quarters of the ticket or half the ticket because they go to court where the employees of the court, the judge, the clerks, all get to have time on the clock to help deal with your case, right? So, hey, and where does that money come from? Oh, yeah, they don't have to make it all from writing tickets. They just get grants from the corporations that call themselves a government. Um, yeah, that's not really... Uh, that's not actually like uh, justice. Like that, that that has nothing to do with justice. That's just slavery. It's a process to keep people enslaved and the ones who want to have freedom or the ones that they just want to put into cells for whatever reason the the rulers the controllers um want to uh want to put people in a cage that's ultimately the the tool that is used to put people in the cage so are you gonna provide ideas now uh i am exercising my fifth amendment right okay then you don't have to speak can you grab your idea? Oh. Ouch. Painful. Painful. So, not just painful, because Fifth Amendment right, and invoking fictional rights that this fictional, like this, this, this document called the Constitution, um, that's not a contract, just, um, there's a very easy to read book called No Treason, the Constitution of No Authority by Lysander Spooner. And that book will just show you how worthless the Constitution is. Just please just read it. Like, I mean, come on, give me that, please. Um,. But also because I think, I'm assuming the Fifth Amendment one is the right to remain silent, right? Probably. Um, so, being silent um, is what they want you to do. Because then they get to abuse you, and now you're not even talking, which is better. If, if a person wanted to rape somebody, then they would definitely prefer to rape somebody who would be silent. I mean, so, it's the same thing here. Like, if you will silently go through everything, then what they do is they basically put things on the record that, that digs their claws into you. I mean, each, you know, you don't realize these words are... These are the way, the words are the way they rape you, and people don't realize that. This is why words are important, in my opinion, or um, maybe even completely unimportant, because maybe there are other things or other ways to communicate. ID for me. And my fourth. I don't, you're okay. not gonna, I, you don't, I don't consent. And my fourth, he had to look to think, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> search and seizure, got it. Exercise, searches. exercise those rights. Grab your ID. Supervisor, please. Grab your ID. This is your last chance, or I'm gonna ask you to put the cameras down, I'm gonna place your handcuffs. This is your last chance, or I'm gonna ask you to put, I'm gonna ask you, <laughs> like, the, okay, this is your last chance 
or I'm going to ask you to put the cameras down. It's so ridiculous what they do. He actually preserved and protected himself for the record so that if it ever came down to it and he had to testify, he could say that he asked you to put your camera down and then you put your camera down. And he doesn't have to say that he took the camera out of your hand, wrenched your arms behind your back, and handcuffed you, and placed his fingers around your shoulder, and squeezed or your upper arm, and squeezed your upper arm and led you into his police vehicle, right? Where he placed his hand on your shoulder as you were being placed in the vehicle in order to guide your body into it so that you wouldn't, like, hit your head or anything. He doesn't have to say all that. He can say, I asked her to put her camera down so that I could place her in handcuffs. And she put her camera down and I placed her in handcuffs. See, a lot of people think that they're not aware of what they're doing. But his language shows his his actions show otherwise. Is this your supervisor? No. Why am I going in handcuffs for being a passenger? Because I can't ID you and I don't know who you are. I don't know if it you It doesn't matter. Okay. Put your cameras down. I don't want them to get broken. Put Why are they going to break? Put your cameras down. I don't want them to get broken. That's his way of threatening to break your cameras. Like, right? Because for all you know, he could just... You raise any fuss at all, and he could just say, All right, and immediately grab your arm. And, oh, oh, whoops. Your camera just hit the pavement and... Aw, oh, I warned her. I warned her that her camera could get broken. But... You know, and, and all of these things, see, like, say we look at the, if we, if we examine how it all looks in front of a jury, like, it's all, I asked her to do this, she did this, right? I warned her that her camera could get broken if she didn't set it down, and she became obstinate or whatever some some word that sounds really bad to the jurors is what they'll use and her camera ended up getting broken while I was handcuffing her it's like completely objective language to hide the subjective nature of the experience because I have the right to record this I have the right to record this I have the right to record this Echo? I have the right to record this, claiming rights again, and it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I have the right okay. to record Let go. this. This is your last chance, ma'am. Put your other camera down. I don't want her to break. You're being detained on that. You're gonna be placed in handcuffs. Okay. Unless you want to try it again, provide ID. You're not searching. I promised search the car. You already told me no. And I told you no for my ID too. Okay, but that you, I have that right to ID you. That's the thing. I don't have long. the right. To, what's that? I told you once we once we conduct a traffic stop, everybody and the vehicle is detained. At that point, everybody inside the vehicle will be identified. You have to provide identification when you are being detained. Okay, I give you plenty of chances. Okay?
you have to blah 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 okay because they still just want you to agree with them if they asked you okay and you didn't say no that's not okay <laughs> like then at least they can say well she never objected she never raised any objection so now if you give it to me i'll take you out of handcuffs and you can hang tight and record all you want okay what am i being detained for so now she falls into speaking legalese. She has accepted the fact that she's detained, uh, which places her under him, basically. He's, she is subject to him, as far as he's concerned. They ignore that it's all done under duress and threat of violence. That's why it's effective to always bring out the violence that they cause or are causing in the moment as it's happening. Part of your, the driver is being detained because he didn't have a license plate. Okay, that's why. Okay, no license plate. So they probably already suspect that these are different people who don't believe in the. Uh, well, maybe they don't necessarily believe in the um, the religion of American government, except maybe they do in some respects. So why am I being detained? Because you are inside a vehicle that was being detained. I was stopping a tra uh, traffic stop. <laughs> yeah. Everybody inside the vehicle gets detained. The incident had to get to this point. You know that. You know that. Yeah, and now he's talking down to her. Just trying to make her feel like, you naughty girl, you naughty girl, you know that. You know that, you dog. That's what he's saying. I know that this is unnecessary. Everybody needs to be like, what if, how do I know you are not a parolee at large, somebody who has a you know, 32 frank uh, warrant, you know, you know, a felony warrant? Oh, you you don't know what that is, but well, like, what a, uh, what a pompous, arrogant psychopath. I don't know who you are. Have I don't know who you are. Yeah. Well, you're the one with the gun. You're the one that, you know, places your hands on people just because they happen to be in a car that you stopped under threat of violence. Uh, hello. You're the psychopath. I don't need that. I just need to You don't need that in order to ID me? I told you you're being detained. For what? But you yeah, so here is a situation where you you have Foxy who's speaking legalese, right? And then you have the officer who is speaking legalese, but the the trouble is is the officer sees that according to legalese, what Foxy is saying doesn't have anything to do with um, the situation that you're in because this is a, you know, where you're being detained. So you've been detained. So it, it, he's not, he doesn't have to say why he's saying that. All he has to do is say that and then the why can come out um, in front of the jury when it's time to make you look bad in front of, you know, 12 people. Because somebody else's car yes. has a, no. Mm -hmm. That's how that's it works. Bold. That is how the law works. I'm not searching your vehicle. I'm not violating your rights, but that I do. I'm not violating your rights. Yeah, well, in some ways he is correct because they have claimed rights and under those rights he has the right or he believes he has the right to violate, he, he has the right to do his thing, you know, and it's a sticky mess that involves a judge, unfortunately, and that's what we should really be trying to avoid is um, escalating the violence by ending having to end up in front of judges, uh, because judges are a whole other mess and they're criminals themselves um but they're a whole other mess and and in many ways it's safer to settle things in front of the judge but 
it's ultimately an escalation. It's it's one where you are much less likely to get shot. Like, you know, clearly we see that police are not very well trained. They they tend to not be very intelligent. All they're doing is this in order to seek dopamine rushes, um, is what it seems to me. And um, so they have a tendency to not be trained as well, and they also have guns on the side of the road, and they can always just say, well, such and such happened, and I thought it was a gun, and bang, 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 now you're dead. So in some ways it's like I, I would be extra cautious, and what I'm the stuff that I'm speaking about is stuff that I think cop watchers should be doing because if you're a cop watcher um it seems to me like you would be cop watching knowing the risks uh so I'm not really speaking to um new people so much uh, but if you think that you can read a situation in a person well enough to avoid getting shot to death, then I think that there are ways um, to help handle yourself. Um, so, yeah. You have that right. And I'm in love with being queen. Okay, so now we'll go to video two. Here's where extra cops probably came. So they must have let her out of handcuffs. See, and what they're doing is trying to figure out, you know, from their bosses or whatever, um, they're tr the police are trying to figure out from their bosses or whatever, like, should, what should we do with this guy? You know, does he have any thing on his record, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're just trying to figure out, like, okay, I got him, and so this is what's happened, what should we do with him? You know, do we get to take him to jail? No, just don't go jerking into any cabinets or anything. Sure it's not bleeding? Yeah, don't go jerking into any... It's like, jeez. Such a... Uh... Hey, what do you want me to touch? What do you want me to see? Maybe you're sure? Okay. You sure? See, not once has anybody asked the police officer to show any factual evidence that they have an obligation to show them this documentation. Um, you know, where, why are you assuming that you have an obligation to show you this documentation? It's because you've been told that it's this way, or you've thought your whole life that it's this way, or, you know, this is just what you think, the way that you think things are. And, yeah, there's no evidence that you have any obligation to them whatsoever. Can you need to go back in handcuffs or it'd be good? Do you need to go back in handcuffs you or it'd be good? Are you safe? You can move back. Do you need to go back in handcuffs, or are you good? God. You know, this is not a man. This guy right here, the mouse is pointing at, is not a man. That is a piece of shit.
for what he is doing, he is being a shitty human being in this video. I don't know who he is at home. I don't know who he is on other days. But I will tell you that this video shows psychopath te psychopathic tendencies in this police officer here. I'm back in handcuffs, bro. I'm good. You're not a threat to me right now. You're not a threat to me either. Actually, you are a threat. Just, just in case. You're the biggest threat in the street right now. Hey, Tyra, here. Because you're a fucking gun. Hey, what's your name back then, man? What's your back then? George 3235. George 3235? Who's your supervisor? Who's your rock commander? Who's your PIO officer? Who's your rock commander? Who's in charge of you right now? Who, who? I'm in charge right now. No, no, who's in charge? You're in charge of shit. Charge. Who, who this is my he says, I'm in charge right now. This is my traffic stop. You know, when when they say stuff like that, you know, it's it's like for me, no, no, sir, actually, Mr. Police Officer, this is my investigation now. Okay, because you just stopped somebody. Because if they stopped me, it's, you just stop somebody. This is what's going on in my mind. You just stop someone who, as far as I can see, I have no obligation to comply with anything that you say. Okay? So, here you are, a person with a gun, and you're saying that I have an obligation of some kind. Okay. So... I'm not going to assume that you do, in fact, have that obligation. I'm going to expect that if you're going to be so bold as to inflict violence upon me if I do not comply with you on the basis that you believe that I have an obligation to you, then I want to see a fact that will prove it. Show me something. Because now, Mr. Police Officer, I am investigating you, okay? And I realize that here I stand, I have, I hold no weapons in my hands except for my camera, which is probably the greatest weapon of self-defense that I could possibly be having um, to show everyone that when I ask you whether or not you have evidence you just ignore the question or you know pretend it doesn't matter or you know you exert violence upon me um, even though you are not able to show or articulate any personal first-hand knowledge of this evidence so I'm investigating you now police officer and see I see you with your flashy cars and your lights it, you're very easy to see police officer you're very visible and you are committing a crime who's in charge of you I'm in charge of myself oh really? yeah See now, like, I I don't really mind a high desert community watch um, kind of egging and egging on the officer. I think that it's a little egoistic. It's based in ego, and but I think it's also a good um, nugget of truth to reveal to the police officer, you know, how he looks, you know, show that human element, throw it in there. Um, I think, though, that, like, if you are willing to say those things to a police officer, then you also shouldn't um, be afraid to say the things that 
I advocate um, to a police officer because if you're afraid that, like, if your reason for not doing what I suggest is because you don't want them to um, become more violent, then also I think that this type of thing could provoke them to become more violent. Now, I think that in this circumstance, it's easy to see that the police officer has probably, um, I don't, I don't know that necessarily he had experience with, um, this type of a traffic stop before. I mean, maybe he has, maybe, maybe it's a misread, but it seemed like he was sort of reading the situation early on, but then he made the, the determined choice that he would just, well, I'll just exert authority over them, you know, um, so, so yeah, I think that it's clear that this police officer can take the things that is being said, and yeah, it'll, it'll hit his insides for sure, <laughs> um, very clearly it does, but, you know, he doesn't seem like the type to lose control all of a sudden and just shoot an unarmed man, and, you know, it, You can do you have you have you you act the way you do. Because if you're a real man, you treat people with respect. I pay this out, and you're going to try to extort me and take us? Um, that's where you're mistaken. You don't pay his salary. Um, you know, he is extorting you. That's, that's what this is. It's extortion. Uh, but you don't actually pay his salary. Contrary to popular belief, these people are not public servants. They are employees of a corporation, and you do not pay their salaries. Now, that's not to say that your money doesn't necessarily um, go toward their salary in some way, but it's it's not, you know, it, it's... You know, that would be like saying that you pay the mafia's salary, you know, or you pay <laughs> you pay the salary of the the guy who comes and clicks fire insurance so he, you know, he won't burn down your company because that's what the mafia used to do. This is just modern day mafia here. Okay, I'm probably gonna skip ahead just a little bit and just see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So, police officer finally figures out okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna ask how old he is. Was he hoping to engage him on a human level? You know, how old are you? Well, you know, 54 or whatever. Um, and then more questions to sometimes, like, I've had police officers do this to me where they'll try to engage me in conversation so that I will, um, because they think that they can get me to trip up, right? Or, or they think that they can embarrass me somehow, but. It would, it would require them to be standing on truth in order to um, embarrass me, and these people are not standing on any truth. Yeah. 
Tell you about your bitch ass punks over here. You from LA, it's a serious deal. Hey, I hear a uh, man to man, would you treat people like that without the bat in your hand? Why don't you treat anybody? Would you like to people touch somebody's girl out there? Man to man, without your, without your badge, without your gun. If I didn't have a badge or a gun, would it, why would I be stopping somebody on a traffic stop? Would you stop? act that way? Would you act as smug as you are now? So a police officer <laughs> avoids the point that is being made by saying, "If I didn't have a badge, and like, see, this is this is the interesting thing is they rely on like sheer cold logic when it serves them, right? And they'll use." logic under the foundation of their legal system as though they have acquired your um, consent or, or as though you have some obligation to um, obey them like they they always start with that fundamental claim it's like give me one miracle and the rest will be logical right <laughs> um so they're really adept at using logic to get out of a situation. And, you know, it's. You really have to be able to point that out. And that's why you have to really clarify exactly what you're saying. And, and one thing that I've noticed is, like, say he said that, and then I just clarified more precisely what I had been saying, then he'll just kind of laugh it off, and, you know. Huh? Would you act as manly? What are you talking about? Like, would you act as smug as you are, like, telling her, lying her tongue that you have to, I No, because I wouldn't be a cop if I didn't have a badge of gun. I wouldn't be a bitch. Okay, but well, why are you uh, quoting false law? Saying that you have to idea when you talk. I wouldn't be doing a traffic stop. You wouldn't... I wouldn't be doing a traffic stop if I didn't have a badge and gun. Yep, you got that right. However, explain to me what is it about the badge and gun? So, are you saying that it is the badge and gun that somehow magically imbues you with this right to um, threaten me with violence while you don't have any evidence of me doing anything wrong like i wasn't harming anybody i wasn't hurting anyone like you're committing violence because you don't like what type of uh, license plate was on my car oh i'm sorry that you're calling a vehicle even though you have no evidence that's a vehicle or you won't uh clarify as to whether or not you're making the legal determination that this is a vehicle I'm going to be fucking with anybody, that's the point. That's the point. Okay. You hide behind your gun. In your bag. What if they gave you that same authority without your bag, without your gun? Would you still come out to people the way you do? Guarantee you wouldn't. Guarantee you don't have the balls. Guarantee you don't have the balls. That's your opinion. Oh, I can tell by the way you act. So I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be making it out I wouldn't be making it about whether or not he has the balls like because then you're sort of feeding into this inner desire to become more creative with your uh, psychopathic tendencies and one thing that you'll notice about people is when when they hear challenges like 
when psychopaths hear challenges, um, a lot of the more sophisticated ones will later, they'll think of ways that they could have been even worse or more creative in the way they punished. Um, and they'll start to push boundaries. Um, so that's one reason why I would try to keep it out of ego. Um, don't make it about, you know, whether or not someone has the balls to do whatever. Just make it out as, you know, do you think that what you are doing is right? And do you have any evidence to show the legitimacy of what you are doing? Or are you just a person committing crimes? Which one is it? You have something to prove. For some reason, you think you're a fucking hero. What's he doing? Is he writing a ticket or what, what's um, going on? Trying to find something to rest with. Well, we could be here for a really long time then. See, in there, I would, I would be asking them, what are you doing? Like, why, why is this taking so long? You know, because the cop is, like, with without any evidence that he has the authority to do this, the cop is basically wasting your time as well. Like, not only is he committing these crimes against you, but he's also wasting your time. And as someone who begins to see things as they really are, I think that you can see this as, you know, a thug who is probably just going to end up writing a ticket. So why the heck is this taking so long? And explain to me what exactly where you are at in your process. Since you're not going to answer my question as to whether or not you actually have personal first-hand knowledge of any fact that shows that I have an obligation to you. <clears throat> He told you, right, that he has the right to ID you? Mm -hmm. Okay. You got that on camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's going to learn about the Fourth Amendment and the scope of the movie by a <sighs> Yeah. Boy. Yep. So, why would you want to make a cop better at um, basically talking about the um the tenets of their religion you know because their religion is just it it's merely that it's a religion it's um their religion is the these statutes and codes and they are the enforcers right of these statutes and codes so teaching them their own statutes and codes is not really going to help the situation especially not in the future I wouldn't want to be trying to make a cop better at the job he does I want him to reconsider the job that he is doing and the ethics behind it so that he can see that it is not ethical for him to do his job and you know it's gonna be harsh reality for some who just think that that doesn't matter Your authority stops. You don't. You don't just get to cross every every line you want, man. It's your cop. There's laws in place to protect us. Huh? Laws in place to protect us. No, those laws are in place to enslave you. Those laws are in place because a judge can interpret those laws however the judge wants. And he will interpret those laws however he wants. And he may enslave you. Well, he is enslaving you through that process. So that's not protection. Protection is seeing things as they really are and calling out what is actually happening. And when they're trying to just manipulate you, it is being able to call that out in the moment. No. I educate myself. Do you have a cell phone? Yeah. Look it up. Look at what? Look it up if I have the right Show me. Look it up if I have Show me. You no. have the proof. Look it up. Google it is what the police officer is saying. Google it. Yeah. 
let's see let's see what what the rule says okay how about you show me if the rule even applies in the first place don't give them that free pass because it's a free pass and this entire video could be filled with the gold that comes from a schmuck like this police officer trying to fumble around with words to explain why he doesn't need factual evidence in order to um, use force to get you to comply with his orders. Show me where it says that you have the right to ID everybody in the car. Well, you're going to talk to your lawyer, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna talk to your lawyer. There you go. <sighs> lawyers, gosh, get away from lawyers. Like, all you know, all it really takes is a couple of weeks of just conversation with someone like me. Who can help you to see things as they really are and you will find that all of your fear about lawyers all of the things that you were afraid of and and I only say conversations with people like me because I will listen to what you're saying and I will hear where you're coming from in your perspective and I will help you to see how lawyers in your life the the attorneys the the bar members are some of the most dangerous people and i might be aware of one that i might trust enough to actually tell people the truth and assess a situation with accuracy but lawyers you can get ri you can learn how to not have to rely on them except for uh, maybe certain menial tasks um, but yeah they're oh my gosh they're they're causing way more harm than good for a multitude of reasons that this video is too long already and I just don't want to get into at this moment we get stopped all the time, bro, we know. Bitch ass going on, it's not, not it's okay. See, notice the... Forget your cameras, yeah, so they don't fall. <laughs> oh yeah, because he really cares about the cameras. Um, so notice, um... How the guy who wrote the ticket was not the guy that was like exercising his authority. It's like, yeah, it's it's all a joke. What a joke. Um. Anyway, I hope that somebody got something out of this video. Um. I hope that I don't offend anyone in this video. It's not my intention. I'm merely doing this in order to inform, and I might pull you know a few more videos to do this on if i feel like it'll help um but yeah all right have a great day guys bye bye